Welcome to Sacred Cow Shipyards, where no ship is safe from being taken down to its nuts and bolts. Alright, just because that's the way my brain works, we're going to start today's episode with yet another historical divergence. Yes, what you see in front of you is none other than the Sikorsky CH-54 Tarhi helicopter. You might otherwise know it by its civilian name as the Sky Crane. Yes, it is blinking enormous. It has a rotor area of over 4,000 square feet. It can lift 20,000 pounds on top of itself, well, underneath itself, but you know what I mean. 10 tons. That thing can lift literal tanks. But that's not actually the cool part of it. The cool part of it was an idea they had back almost the time the helicopter was developed, where they wanted to turn it into what amounted to be a flying bus. They were going to sling up a uh, passenger pod underneath it have that thing carry it out to somewhere, drop the pot off, and use that as maybe a forward operating base, a staging area, or just as components to make a larger uh, base. It never really took off. Um, you see them very rarely these days. It, they are still used, but it was never really a mainstream thing, especially once the uh, Chinooks and other helicopters started showing up on the scene. But that idea actually turns up in science fiction. And today's science fiction topic is really, really niche. Back in the 95 to 96 television uh, season window, there was a 23-episode series of a show called Space Above and Beyond. Not to go all hipster on you, but you probably never heard of it because it did not get very good reviews and thus, like I said, only lasted the one season. That said, it was nominated for two Emmys and one Saturn, so it couldn't have been entirely horrible. It centered around a Earth... Uh, military force, which of course was the Blessed Navy, not the Air Force. It was actually the Navy in space. Thank you very much. Anyways, it centered around a uh, team of Marines uh, combating an alien force that was invading the solar system. Uh, of course, it fell prey to the standard science fiction tropes where the pilots were also the ground pounders. Uh, yes, I know the Marines go on and on and on about how every Marine is a rifleman, but it is simply a waste of training and time for a pilot to be regularly going on ground-pounding missions. It, they would be better suited to be in an aircraft, or in this case, a spacecraft. Or actually, in this case, both. Because, yes, there are actually a number of interesting ships in this series. We're not going to talk about the obvious Hammerhead, even though it really is an interesting fighter, and we might circle back around to it in the future. Nor are we going to talk about the massive flying brick that is the USS Saratoga, even though it is a not horrible representation of what a space fighter carrier might look like. No. Today we are going to talk about the Intersolar System Cargo Vessel. Yeah, that's a mouthful. Unfortunately, its acronym isn't a whole lot better, the ISSCV. And in fact, Intrasolar System might be better, but let's not get too bogged down in the details. Basically, this is what happens when a Tarhi grows up and flies off into space. Um, and it's ISSAPC, or the Intersolar System Armored Personnel Carrier Cousin, is what happens when the Tarhi grows up, gets guns, and flies off into space. Yeah, this is actually a weirdly little modular spacecraft that is designed to operate in both atmosphere and in space, and land and drop off a variety of different cargo pods, take off again and go do other things while the cargo pod is used or troops deploy out of it or whatever happens. And someone actually thought about how the, all that might work. Those two engines out on the wings or pylons or whatever those amount to actually rotate 90 degrees down and possibly further for braking. And there's two more engines already pointing downwards underneath the back section of the spacecraft. So landing is already taken care of. And that big engine, twin engine assembly on the stern dorsal section is actually a hybridized scramjet rocket. So when it's in space, it shuts off the forward vents and just runs on whatever magical rocket fuel it uses. But while it's in the atmosphere, it can pop open those vents and run leaner or easier or however you want to look at it. And on top of that, it actually has, you know, useful guns. There's a, a dorsal turret mounted about midsection on it, give or take. And then there's another nose turret mounted right underneath the cockpit. And depending on the module that's attached to it, you can have a central gunner position that's manned with up to three people, I think, running targeting and running the turrets and running radar and so on and so forth. And the cargo pods actually come in a variety of different sizes, flavors, and colors. 
You've got your basic Mark I Mod Zero cargo pod. You've got a personnel carrier. You've got an armed personnel carrier that brings its own little blister turrets to the party. You've got an emergency pod. You've got a medic pod. You've got all kinds of different things. And this thing is actually meant to, say, launch from Earth and go all the way out to the asteroid belt all by its little lonesome. It actually carries enough supplies and enough material on board to keep a crew of, I think it was like 10 Marines functional on their flight out. The, the armored personnel carrier variant actually has racks built into the cargo pod behind the uh, cockpit. And as I say this and edit this, I suddenly realize that I should probably explain the term rack. It is a Navy term to describe a bed. I honestly don't know where the slang came from. I can't find any real etymological history for it, but it basically describes a very short, very uncomfortable, very not very well padded bed. So there you go, your new word for the day. Anyways, we're probably going to keep this one pretty short today, simply because the design isn't that far ahead of what we're doing already. Uh, the show is only supposed to take place in 2063, I believe, and while I think that's a little optimistic for the way our technology is progressing right now, uh, leave Elon Musk enough money and we might see these things in our time. But the point is, it's a design that does actually work presently and could work in the future when adapted for space travel. And the ability to drop off a cargo pod or a munitions pod or a weapons emplacement or a new barracks or a new kitchen or whatever, wherever you want to go in a modular format, is actually pretty handy for almost any military anywhere. And given that this thing can land vertically, take off vertically, do atmosphere and space, and can even bring some guns to the party, it's actually kind of a jack of all trades, definitely master of none, but it does a lot of the workhorse stuff gut work that needs to be done for militaries. Someone actually thought about, okay, how will we get troops to the front line when the front line might be an asteroid? And when we don't want to put a capital ship in harm's way just to send over a little tiny boarding craft or whatever. And this was the answer they came up with. And honestly, it's a pretty good answer. And that's all from Sacred Cow Shipyards. Please be advised that any ship left on the dock for more than 24 hours will be compressed to a cube. Have a good day.